Hey guys, Brian here. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a different video. Uh, this is going to be kind of a, a uh, rambling slash discussion video. There won't be any cutting here. I, I just want to kind of give an update on the last, what, two, three weeks of me using the machine. Kind of share my thoughts and give a give an update on, on what I've been doing so far. So first, quick shout out. I want to say thank you everyone who has commented and subscribed lately. Um, we're seeing some growth on the channel and, uh, I think that's pretty cool to see. I'm putting a little more, more time into the channel, you know, just to kind of film what I'm doing. So quick, quick, thank you for that. All right. So first we'll talk about aluminum real quick. And, um, the video that I uploaded the other day of doing this full depth of cut here, I just, <laughs> I was blown away myself at what, at what kind of chips we were making here. Um, hope I don't regret doing this, but I mean, these chips are huge. I was very, very impressed at what we were doing here. And, you know, we were doing this full depth here. I would have, I would have continued the cut, but my, I just had to do this facing operation. If I didn't do this facing operation, I wouldn't have blown through the bottom here, which is kind of unfortunate. Otherwise I would have let that cut keep going. Um, that was going to be the numpad case that I made in the other video. So as you can tell, I have been doing some experimenting here. Uh, we got a good side and a bad side on this plate. Uh, this left side here is a, is a mixture of uh, two flute bits uh, going too fast, going too slow for that matter. And just me experimenting here. One of the things I've learned is that the single flute end mill is, is probably the best way to go for cutting aluminum. Uh, that's been stated probably by many people, but it's something that I have seen actual results on. So, uh, not only a single flute, but a sharp single flute. I have, I've kind of mentioned this in the past, but I am kind of a believer in high quality end mills or high quality bits cutters. Um, the, the 10 for the 10 for $10 special might be okay for like plywood, but in my opinion, I feel like it's okay to get a $20, $25 uh, end mill. If you treat it right, it'll stay sharp and it'll cut well. Um, this right here was cut with a $16 single flute end mill on Amazon. And I actually ordered a $40 end mill that was supposedly meant for aluminum. We'll see how it does. But I'm very happy with the $16 result here on this guy. Um, so I actually bought two of them two of the $16 ones. And I was, I broke one of the, uh, let's see here. Um, okay. This guy right here. So I actually ended up breaking, uh, one of the tips of the flutes here. We'll see if this focuses, but there's a little bit of aluminum clogged there. However, uh, the tip of the flute is broken and I cannot cut with this end mill anymore. Sucks it was $16, but um, the second one that I have here is what I use to cut out the full depth of cut, and it practically looks brand new here. So once you get your feeds and speeds down, it you know let the cutter do what it's supposed to, and it, this is still a, as sharp as as you know the first time I used it. So uh, with this dull tip, you won't be able to get a good start in aluminum, and it won't it won't cut for you. So, uh, that's just one of the things I've learned so far. Uh, sorry for the camera moving here. So this, uh, this cutting here was just me experimenting right now. I'm cutting aluminum at 20 inches a minute and I forget the depth of cut right now, but I normally cut walnut or, you know, wood at 30 inches a minute. So there's an argument out there that slower isn't necessarily better. You, you got to look at what kind of chips you're making and you can see these, these small fine chips right here. This is, you know, still good. It's, it's not quite, you know, what we got here. We're not making the same depth of cut, but as long as you're making good chips, then the cutter is doing its job. So when I tried to slow this way down to like, you know, five inches a minute, I was not making good chips. It was chattering, vibrating. And, uh, it, I know it might sound kind of counterintuitive, but you know, you gotta, you gotta let the cutter do what it's supposed to. And if you're going too slow, 
every revolution you're not making a good chip you're you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot a little bit and it might sound a little counterintuitive but you might want to try speeding it up and see how that goes uh your depth of cut still might not be you know magnificent or anything but just something to kind of keep in mind if you're trying to experiment with aluminum here i have tried the eighth inch single flute from V1 Engineering site, from uh, Ryan's site. The single flute that he sells, it's an eighth inch uh, shank. Uh, let's see here. Should be this guy. This guy right here. Um, this is a very good cutter, in my opinion. Uh, it's pretty cheap, too, actually. I think it's less than $10. Sorry for the focus. But um, this is the one that I cut out my aluminum plate for. And this is the keyboard that I assembled, I should say. So this was cut on the CNC here. I have just kind of dry fit it for now. Um, these are some old keycaps that I'm not using currently. I'm not even, they're not even in the right spots. This is just to kind of test fit it. Uh, this thing, I'm just blown away by the fact that I can make this in my basement on my 3D printed CNC machine. Like the, the quality here is is more than acceptable. Um, so it's a, it's kind of a sandwich layer case. Um, and I cut the aluminum out on the CNC with the eighth inch bit from Ryan here. Let me take this apart real quick and I'll kind of show you the, the metal plate. Okay, these should all just kind of come out here. There we go. So this is kind of a, whoops. Um, this is what is kind of known as a sandwich style layout. So you have your, your, uh, your top trim piece here that I cut on CNC, of course. This is a, what, quarter inch walnut? And then I also did the same trick that I did with my numpad video and uh, hammered in these uh, threaded inserts. I did get a little chip out on this guy here. Um, that was my fault when I made the circle or the, the hole bigger. Um, so, but I cut out all these holes here on with uh, the eighth inch bit from, uh, from Ryan's shop. So um, I cut this out, this is about 25 minutes. 25 minute cycle time to cut out this plate, which I think is more than acceptable for what we're doing. Uh, one of the, another thing to remember here is when you're cutting, uh, finish passes are your friend. So when you're, when you're cutting out the squares, your bit is going to deflect period. Like it doesn't matter if you're cutting, uh, aluminum or wood, plastic, whatever, probably not plastic, but, uh, so what I'll do here is I'll, cut out each square and then leave, you know, two hundredths or, you know, 20 thousandths of an inch to then go back and, uh, 20 thousandths of an inch stock to leave. That way I can go back and finish it and get right up to the dimension I want. That way I can cut it and get the hole I want without deflecting. So that might be an obvious statement to some of you, but if you are doing anything with precision or accuracy, I should say, then you will need to do a finish pass, which is, it's okay. It's just kind of the name of the game, but, uh, something I've, I've learned in the past, what, two, three weeks. So I was going to make a dedicated video on this keyboard here, but I'm actually going to go with a different layout than this here. It'll be slightly different. I'm basically going to be bringing the arrow keys up here and then numpad over that way. It'll be all one sheet of keys. Basically. Um, this has too much of a chin for me. So, um, that's okay though. It, this was good experimentation. Uh, I will probably make a video on this when the time comes. So if you guys want to, uh, stay tuned for that, you can. So that is pretty much going to do it guys. I haven't had any hiccups with the machine so far. I'm still using the full size Rambo. Um, you know, the belts are staying tight here. Uh, no real hiccups with motors or anything. Uh, the, 
DeWalt router is doing pretty good. I expect a brush change shortly. I've had this for what, three years? Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Still using CNC JS here. Um, I'm kind of making shortcut buttons as I go, you know, my custom commands, but uh, just kind of playing it, uh, playing it by ear. So uh, I apologize if this video was kind of boring. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, feel free to subscribe if you like. I I plan to keep this keep this train going. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.